tonight, Fatima May's family mourns its little angel. Witnesses to a three-vehicle crash urge to come forward. And a chuka helps fight a rare disease. Good evening, I'm Britt Dieterich. Also tonight, overcrowding in police cells finally begins to fall. A bushfire moving from Lyles Bridge toward Lake Epilock has prompted the CFA to issue an emergency warning message. Crews began battling the blaze at about 3.30 this afternoon before authorities announced it was too late for Myrtle Creek and Lyle residents to evacuate. More than 25 units were dispatched and concerned residents should monitor the CFA website. The family of a four-year-old girl tragically killed when a tree branch crashed down on her in Rosalind Park in Bendigo last week has spoken out. It's urging the community to get behind a campaign to help Patia's mother, Christy, who may never walk again. Cheryl Roberts was supposed to be minding her four-year-old great-granddaughter, Patia May, today. Instead, she's mourning the loss of a little girl after a tree branch fell on her in Rosalind Park in Bendigo last Monday. I want her here. I want to be able to see her again. The four-year-old was about to start her second year of kinder, but Tia's family can't believe what's happened. And she'd be running down the track and she'd just stop and go, I love you, Poppy, or whoever's with her, you know. Don't just her, I love her and I miss her heaps as well. And so does everyone, so does a lot of people. She was dearly loved. Batia's mother, Christy Thompson, was badly hurt when the branch fell. Her family fears she may never walk again. She had two operations. She had an operation on her back the other day where they put two pins in. She had an operation on her spine where they're going to, they're going to make a cage around her spine because all the no, nerves were crushed. But Christy's family says she's a fighter. She is so brave and she hasn't cried yet as far as I know. The community is rallying around the family to try raise $100,000 for Christie's treatment. Anyone wanting to donate can head to the Bendigo Bank Community Enterprise Foundation website. Sarah Lawrence, Win News. Coming up after the break on Win News, firefighters put to the test. And in the Gamby, tourism booms thanks to Black Caviar. A 65-year-old White Hills man is in the Bendigo Hospital with serious head injuries after he fell off his bike in Ironbark today. Police say he was wearing a helmet, but his face struck the road when he fell from the three-wheel bike on Eaglehawk Road. Emergency services received more than 20 calls for help overnight in the Bendigo region during strong winds. The SES says most of the calls were for trees down over the road and some minor damage to houses. And a shed and farm equipment were destroyed by a grass fire which burned more than 50 acres at Lanakuri yesterday. Around 40 firefighters battled the blaze, which the CFA believes was sparked by an electrical wire which fell onto grass at a nearby property. Firefighting in the state's northeast reached new heights today as the Rappel crew took to the skies. The firefighters were put through their paces as part of a regular training exercise. And it's time now for Monday Sport with Ebony Jordan. Thanks, Britt. Coming up tonight, Bendigo Spirit su survives a scare to continue its winning streak and age proves no barrier at the Oceana Masters. And Britt, that's all in sport. Great, Ebony. Thank you very much. Up next, all your weather details for the week ahead. Then Morong fosters a pet boom. It has been a mostly sunny but cool start to the week across central Victoria. Taking a look at today's details. Seymour reached a top of 21 degrees after an overnight low of 9. Maryborough 19, Charlton 24, Kerrang also 24, Swan Hill 23 degrees. Onto the satellite picture, a trough over eastern Queensland is producing showers 
and severe thunderstorms, while thick cloud over Tasmania near a deep low is also bringing showers. Patchy cloud over southern Victoria in moist, in moist southerlies is only producing the odd light shower, but skies are clearer in the north as winds dry out over land. And on the synoptic chart, a low pressure system over the Tasman Sea will move away to the southeast later tonight as a high pressure system develops over the bight. The high will gradually move eastwards on Tuesday, crossing Tasmania on Wednesday. The high will then remain on Friday with a low, weak low pressure trough expected to move into southwest Victoria on Friday night. To the forecast for tomorrow, Castle Maine a top of 20 degrees, Maryborough warmer 22, Charlton much warmer 26, Swan Hill Kerrang, Bell Reynold also 26. So in Bendigo there will be a low of 7 degrees before reaching a partly cloudy 23. To Melbourne's forecast and it will be wet with a top of 21 degrees. And to the outlook, skies will stay mostly sunny for most of the week, with the chance of isolated showers on Friday. Bendigo on Wednesday, 29 degrees, 31 Thursday, warmer Friday, 33 degrees. And finally tonight, a rare and rather small farm animal is becoming a popular pet across Victoria. Miniature goats have only been recognised as a breed in Australia for 14 years, but their affectionate nature and low maintenance ways are winning people over. They're extremely affectionate, playful and inquisitive, and a lot smaller than the average goat. Morong Sharon Roby has been breeding miniature goats for five years. I had a goat as a child and um, the it was a family pet and we just loved her dearly. So when we um, sold her and came out here, I wanted to put something on the land. So goats were the first option. Miniature goats only grow to around 50 centimetres high and every generation is getting smaller. Miss Roby says many people buy them as pets because they're low maintenance. You can leave them for a few days and, and that's fine. You know, they're, they're not quite as... Um, as problematic as the dog is and um, yeah as long as they are um, got a friend. Miss Roby even takes her miniature goats to competitions. Her prize goat Rebel is recognised as one of the smallest males in the country. They never cease to amaze me. Um, they're always, always um, up to no good. <laughs> Trying to find out how to get into things, out of things, up on things. The breed originally started in Queensland and there's now over a hundred registered breeders around the country. Miss Roby is now preparing for May when more kids are due. Sarah Lawrence, Win News. And that is how we saw news in the region today. Join us again tomorrow night for Win News, your local news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks for your company this Monday night. Have a great evening. Good night. This has been a Win News presentation from Win, Australia's number one regional television network.